Good afternoon and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday, the 5th of October 2020, and the time has just gone 12.36 British summer time. And it's been a fairly positive start uh, to the European trading session. We're showing fairly respective gains across European equities. Uh, and this is largely down to a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, President Trump's health uh, appears to be on demand. Uh, over the weekend, um, the, US, the US leader um, posted a short video said, saying he's hearing great things from doctors. There was speculation and talk over the weekend that it could be released um, released uh, in terms of the health care. Um, in terms of the US stimulus package, uh, Mr. Trump over the weekend was also tweeting uh, that he was kind of encouraging, um, was, was essentially encouraging both sides to kind of come together and strike some sort of a deal. Um, it seems to me that President Trump isn't doing so well in the opinion polls. Um, so it looks like he could have been tweeting, uh, kind of putting some pressure on his fellow Republicans saying, look, you need to try and get a deal done here with the Democrats, uh, possibly as a way of trying winning over prospective voters. So the fact that the US president is sending out videos, I sending out a video saying that uh, is hearing great things from the doctor. So that has alleviated some of the concerns around his health and also this kind of renewed speculation at the uh, at the Democrats and the Republicans are kind of are going to be kind of edging towards um, edging closer towards striking a deal. But there's not huge hopes a, a, a coronavirus relief, relief stimulus package is going to be announced anytime soon. But it just seems that things the impression is that there, there are hopes that things are going to move along in that direction. We've also had some reasonably mixed uh, services uh, numbers out of Europe. Uh, the eurozone eurozone readings weren't too impressive. Um, you know, a number of the, the countries, uh, Spain, Italy, France, all saw negative readings. Germany, the best of the of the bunch, saw an ever so slightly slight increase in uh, in terms of growth. Uh, many of the reports, some of the reports were better than expected, others were, were worse. Um, the UK's numbers were the best numbers out of the U Europe as a whole. But keep in mind, the um, the UK economy reopened later uh, than its continental counterparts. Uh, so with that, you would expect to see a bit of a delay. Um, what I'll quickly do now is run through the week ahead. Uh, and for those of you who f follow the videos regularly, uh, you know the structure. I'll then talk about the major indices, the major currency pairs, and the major commodities. So starting off with the week ahead, if you go to our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under latest news and analysis, you'll find it here. Uh, today on Monday, we have the services uh, PMI reports. Uh, tomorrow on Tuesday, uh, we have Levi Strauss report third quarter numbers. We have an interest rate decision from the Reserve Bank of Australia. We have FOMC minutes um, from the Federal Reserve on Wednesday. Also Wednesday, we have first half numbers from Tesco. Uh, on Thursday, elect Electro Components um, are going to post their second quarter numbers. On Friday, we have third quarter numbers out from Delta Airlines over in, in the US. On Friday, we have UK GDP, uh, and we also have UK manufacturing and manufacturing production and industrial production. So starting off with the major indices, I'll be taking a look at the FTSE 100 first and foremost. So the market hit a multi-month high in June, the highest level since since the um, since since mid-March. But since then, we've broadly been moving lower. But if you notice, we seem to found some decent support in around this zone here, kind of the 5,800 down to 5,767 mark. So we're not particularly moving higher, but we seem to be stopped moving lower. Um, so, so today's session has taken us up the highest level uh, in about a week and a half or two weeks. We are uh, edging up. Uh, we're currently at 5,950. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting 6,000. And that not, not, not only is that a big psychological number, it also, broadly speaking, um, coincides with the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, which we can see on a few time on a few occasions in the last few months has acted as uh, resistance in the past. So if the metric has been important previously, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future, but there are no guarantees. So we could be looking at targeting 6,000 or just north of it. Um, if the market continues to press on higher from here, 
If it takes off 6,000, we could then be looking heading up towards the 100-day moving average in at 6,096, or if you go beyond that, up towards the highs of the middle of September in at 6,126. 6, Conversely, if we actually move lower from here, we could find support from 5,800 or down around here at 5,767. And if you if you a break below that, that'd be probably be uh, probably uh, that's likely to be fairly significant, seeing as that region acted as support on a few occasions. So if you have a break below that, that could take us back down towards this area here, and around 5,660. That's the FTSE 100. Taking a look here um, at the at the DAX the German market, is it a decent upward move uh, between March and into September, where, where it hit its highest level since uh, since since February. But since then, we've had the lower low, lower high, a lower low, and another lower high, and we're sort of at a point where we could either rally again and fail to take out the most recent highs and turn over on itself, or else we could look at actually taking out the most recent highs. Uh, and then heading back up towards uh, the highs posted in the middle of the month. So the broader trend is still to the upside. So it seems to me that's probably more likely of the two is that we'll could look at retesting the more recent highs. If we take those out, that could put us on track to see take us towards the levels seen uh, only about two and a half, three weeks ago. So if we continue to hold above this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, which comes into play at 12,608, we can see that it acted nicely as support back in late May. It did trade below it once in late September, but it, did, but it managed to close above it on that particular day. If you can hold above that, that metric, it's likely that the broader bullish trend will, will continue. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the 50 day moving average at 12,897, or it's even the, kind of the late September highs in at 12,948. If you go beyond that, we could be looking at, looking at targeting 13,000. And if we go beyond 13,000, that'll be a re reasonably big deal. And we could then be looking at heading toward this zone uh, around 13,339, or this area here, we can the highs of mid September. Conversely, if we do have a decent sized break below the 50 move, the 100 moving average, we could be looking at finding support from the late September low, um, which comes into play in at 12,339, and if we go below that, we can then be, find support from this red line here, the 200 moving average. Notice how it acted nicely as support in late July, and that comes into play at 12,164. Turning our attention to the US, starting off with the Dow Jones. So the Dow Jones uh, moved higher from late March uh, through into early September. It had multi-month high in September, the highest level seen since you know late February. Uh, but since then, we've had the lower low, a lower high, a lower low, and another lower high. But once again, the highs of early October haven't taken out the highs of mid-September, but they can they could retest those. We're uh, we're, we're, we're ho holding above this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 27,696. If you can press on higher from here. We could be looking at retesting the highs of September at 28,366. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading back up towards the kind of 29,000 mark or else even up towards the high scene, uh, the multi-month highs that were seen in early September. Uh, if we do move to the downside, uh, 27,000 is a big cycle, is a big number. That region could act as support. And if alternatively, if you go below that, this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, which acted nicely as support uh, in late September, that could act as as a support again. Um, that came into play. Uh, the 100 moving average comes into play at 26,829. That is the Dow Jones. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. The S&P 500 has been the best of the bunch of the big indices because the highs it achieved in early September were actually all-time highs. Now, granted. We had a pretty aggressive sell-off or pretty aggressive correction since then. The lower low, the lower high, the lower low, and now look at the rebound. So once again, is this a lower high? Are we going to run out of steam and turn over on ourselves and head back down here? Or are we going to actually retest and re retake, uh, retake the mid-September highs and look going to press on higher here? We can see that this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, uh, comes into play. 
comes into play at 3,370. We're currently just above that. We're currently at 3,374. If you can, you see, see I've seen a bit of consolidation in that area, but if you can hold above that metric, it's likely that the broader upward trend is going to continue. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at, tar at targeting um, the mid September highs in at 3,429. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards 3,500, or then beyond that, up towards the all time highs that were achieved at the beginning of September. Uh, if you do have a decent break below 3,300, we can see that that area on a few occasions acted as support. Um, we could head back towards this blue, this yellow line, the 100 moving average, and that comes to play at 3,244. Take a look now what's on the currencies, starting off with Euro dollar. So in early September, over a month ago, uh, Euro dollar hit its highest level in over two years, but we, we've seen a bit of a correction since. We've, we've had the lower low, lower high, lower low, moving higher again, but we still have yet, yet to kind of get up towards the 50 day moving average. So similar to similar chart shape to what we saw on the equities whereby could we be looking at retesting the, the recent highs and continuing in the broader upper trend, or could we look at actually running out of steam before we retest these areas and look to turn lower? But keep in mind, the broader trend is still to the upside. So if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting uh, the kind of 118 area. That's where the 50 day moving average comes into play. As you can see, it was fairly important. Um, we saw some, it, was, it was a fairly important metric not too long ago. If we go beyond that, uh, we could then be looking at heading up towards um, the recent highs, well, the highs are kind of mid, early to mid-September in at one spot, 19, uh, one spot, 19.17. And if we go beyond that, we could then be, we could be looking ahead to retest the highs uh, in around the kind of 120 zone or just north of it, uh, which are posted in early September. If the market does turn over, turn over on itself, keep an eye out for the lows of late September in around one spot, 16.12. And if we go below that, we get head that back down towards the uh, the 114 area. Uh, we can see that act as but uh, that zone uh, acts as but resistance in early Ju in early June and also uh, support in kind of you know, middle of July as well. Let's take a look at pound dollar. So sterling obviously has the kind of on you know, the UK EU trade negotiations hanging over it. Um, so we could see continued volatility in the pound. But even though for all the you know, all the tough talk about both sides are willing to walk away, and from Prime Minister Boris Johnson on, on the UK side, he said that uh, if the deal isn't agreed by the 15th of October, the British team will, will, will walk away. Well, that's less than two weeks away. And guess what? The pound has actually been gaining ground versus the, the dollar the last few sessions. Granted, it has been making massive strides, but it's still been moving to the upside. Uh, so the pound hit its highest level uh, about a nine-month high, or so, eight, over eight, you know, eight nine-month high was achieved in September. We've we've uh, we've moved back since then. The lower low, the lower high, the lower low, but we have been moving higher um, once again. So, the last few sessions, we've seen that the pound press on higher. There's been an increase in positive momentum on the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram. We could look at retesting the 50-day moving average in at one spot 30, 35. If we go beyond that, we could look head up towards the kind of 132 area or one spot 3269 should he move lower from here support could come into play from, from this zone here the 30 moving average in at one spot 2716 or just below that we saw the lows of mid to late september uh, in around one spot 26 one spot 2675 and if you go if you have a size of break below that that could take us back down towards the lows of mid july in at one spot 2480 Turning our attention to gold now on the commodities front. Uh, so gold racked up in a record high in early August. We've had a, a quite an aggressive rebound move to the downside or a pullback rather in the middle of August. It's broad it's in a range bound for a number of weeks uh, there, but but only um, in late September it managed to fall back to uh, its lowest, well, basically about a two month low um, uh, in late September. And we've, we've recovered since then, but it's been kind of dancing around the 1900 mark. But keep in mind, look how far it's traveled 
the broad range is still very much to the upside. If we can hold above this area here, the lows here in around uh, 1848, if you can hold above those lows, which also kind of coincides uh, not too far away from the 50 moving average, or sorry, the 100 day moving average, this yellow line here, if you can hold above those lows, the broader upper trend should continue. Um, if you have a decent move north of 1900, it could put us on track for targeting this blue line, the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 1944. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting the highs of mid September. Uh, in, in around 1973 and if you go beyond that we could then be looking heading up towards the highs achieved in early September um, in at 1992. Lastly taking a look at what's going on on the oil market I'll take a look at Brent crude oil on the December contract. So the oil market had a decent rebound between April into uh, into, into August where it hit a multi-month high the highest level uh, it was a five-month high that was achieved in August, but since then, we've had we've had concerns, renewed concerns about about the health, about the uh, coronavirus crisis. Um, so we've, we've seen an aggressive move to the downside in mid-September. We've had the lower high. Now we've had the lower low. You know that was only achieved on Friday, just gone. So we have had a decent rebound today. We're well off the lows of Friday, but this kind of broad trend in the last few weeks uh, it still appears to be in place. So if you do drop below the recent lows here, uh, that could put us on track to heading back down towards uh, $36, bar 36, $36 per barrel. If you can manage to hold above the recent lows and we can press them higher from here, well, we're currently at 40 by 81. If you could hold above 40 bucks a barrel, we could look at heading back up towards the 42 area. And if you have a decent correction and we take out the highs of late September in a 43 spot 03, we could then be looking at retesting the 50 moving average, this blue line here, in a 43 spot 89. We can see that area act as we saw a bit of consolidation, a bit of support and resistance from the metric in early September. So that could be an area to watch out for. Should we have a should we have a decent move to the upside? Uh, that's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.